nodules can be an inch, they can be a foot. They've been sitting in the ground for, it's estimated, around 280 million years. Quite a long city. time. Yeah, <laughs> waiting for me. <laughs> Hey guys, we are at the Tucson Gem and Mineral Show and we have a wonderful guest, Darren Arthur. He's a gemologist and a miner based out of Australia and I understand you have some pretty cool specimens for us today. I think I do. I think you'll love them. Excellent. There is a clue. Okay. A bit of the sun, a bit of the moon, but it may remind you of a rainbow. Okay, well, let's see. Oh, look at that. So what I'm seeing here, there's this kind of peachish, brownish base color. And then I see a lattice of inclusions that produce, oh my gosh, an array of color there. Essentially the entire spectrum of the rainbow. Yeah, this is called rainbow lattice. It is a feldspar. The actual gem is moonstone. You get this wonderful pattern in it and the iridescence is from the breakdown of the ions that are inside the rock. Tell us a little bit about its history. I lived in Alice Springs for about six months and I used to spend time out in the bush and I came across an old mine where they used to mine mica back in the 1940s. In the mullock heap, where all the, the rubbish is, I found some wonderful moonstone that just looked different and I told a buddy about this spot and we camped there one night and the following morning we went for a walk and we just happened to walk up a gully in between two very low hills and as we came out of the gully we were just picking up this unusual rock. I wasn't even a gemologist, I was young. When I showed it to a few people, our friend Bill Vance brought it to the GIA and he said he'd never seen it before. I can't imagine finding something that nobody else had ever found before. Like what does that feel like? Um, yeah, a bit surreal now when I look back over 35 years ago. I try to remain modest. Yeah. <laughs> it was okay. originally misnamed as a sunstone, but it is technically a moonstone. It has some sunstone in it, so some hematite, and then it has this wonderful lattice pattern of magnetite. While it's been setting, magnetite has tried to form a three-dimensional crystal, but it's been locked between the cleavage planes. When you look at an octahedral crystal, you'll see that it is an equilateral triangle, and that's exactly what it's trying to replicate. In a way, it's like a skeletal crystal within the, yeah. the moonstone. Wow. And it goes all the way through the rock. I have a feeling you have more to show us. Yes, I have some. Oh, that is so cool. So I see six different specimens. This is the rock that we're actually mining in. The rock itself is a reformed granite. It's broken down and it's formed what we call gneiss. This is quite soft and you can see here there's a little bit of pink yeah. lattice, a little bit of sunstone on the side. When you say a little bit of sunstone on the side, what do you mean by that? Well, as the material's forming, the feldspar doesn't like having too much in the way of like iron trace elements within it. Those elements congregate and they'll form the inclusions. And being iron and oxygen, you start off with Fe3O4, which is a basic magnetite. And while it's forming, it will run out of iron. You drop one molecule of iron and one molecule of oxygen to Fe2O3, and you end up with hematite forming. And quite often under the microscope, you'll see the lattice will have little orange sections on them. That's where it's actually running out of iron, and it just replaces that void with the next step down, which is hematite. That so, is amazing. Yeah. That's nature. Yeah, and you can just, yep. like, it tells the story of its formation yep. right there. And this thing just crumbles. It, it's dry and it's just falling apart. Yeah, I could feel that. So it's travelled all the way from Central Australia and I've brought it all the way here. And I was amazed it hadn't popped out, Yeah, because quite often they do. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. It actually feels like you could just crumble it away. So let's talk a little bit about mining. So you mine in Central Australia? Yes, at this point we're only hand mining. I, I feel that that's the best way to do it. We don't want to break the nodules or damage valuable material because it is rare and it is a finite deposit, so it will run out one day. So we sieve it and I bring it back generally and wash it and then I sit there and grade every piece. I will decide what goes through the saw and some of these do have areas in them which are capable of cutting cabochons. 
from the side, you'll see it's quite yeah. transparent. And then it's just full of all this black lattice. Quite often we find material which has had no oxidization of the magnetite and it just remains black and with a metallic luster. Okay, so that's oxidized. Yes. Okay. What happens is that the magnetite lattice over a period of time will actually separate from the moonstone and it will leave just a tiny little void and moisture helps in the breakdown of ions as you see rust. Like opal and a lot of spectral type gems, it relies on the thickness. The actual gap thickness will determine the colour and you'll see it doesn't have much rainbow. No. And that's because it hasn't oxidised. That is yeah. so cool. And you get the adularescence from the moonstone. Yeah. You get the adventurescence from the sunstone. And then you get the iridescence and the metallic luster from the lattice. So much going on. Yeah. So you mentioned that this is found in one place. Just how big is that mining area? Well, the lease that we pegged is under 400 by 500 metres in size. Only about 10% of that area or less is actually supplying the feldspars. So yeah, it is quite a small area. I'll show you some pieces in there. You can have a look. Okay. Ooh. Oh, jewellery. So we have a pendant and then two rings. Can I put them on? You may. That is pretty. We sell a lot to jewellers and they're not sure about the material, how it will set. And the idea with this is to showcase what you can do with the, the cut gems. Yeah. And that has champagne <laughs> diamonds I was going to ask side. what that was. Yeah. Everything I set with diamonds, I don't use anything lower grade. Okay, so you do everything by yourself? Yeah. Anything of a specific value, I'll cut it myself. And then you design it and then give the goldsmith the design? I have, I have three different goldsmiths. Okay. Um, sometimes I'll do a design and have it cast and sometimes I'll have it handmade. That is amazing how you turn this and it just, on its side, it just disappears. Yes, yeah, that's how thin the blades are. That is wild. You look at this, it's quite a solid piece, mm -hmm. but when you look at it from the side, you'll see it's, it's actually quite transparent and you'll see the blades come and go. That is remarkable. And it's just full of it. Yeah. When we are digging, sometimes we find scorpions and we see holes in the ground over an inch in diameter. We actually get these lovely spiders, <laughs> yeah. like a tarantula. Uh. But I didn't bring oh. one. <laughs> I was legitimately somewhat <laughs> nervous. Okay, so this looks like a different material. This is the moonstone that I initially found in the mica heap. It has an amazing sheen also has orthoclase that's formed within it as well, so it, it almost looks like a moon with a little bit of cloud going by it. It totally does. So I've actually named this Lunar Light. This is the reason why I discovered this, just walking along finding this on an old heap that had been sitting for probably about 50 or 60 years. Here's one I found on the heap. It's actually Lunar Light, but it also has lattice in it yeah, as well. Yeah, that combination. So there is a bit of lattice in this deposit. That is so cool. The other thing that we find on our lease, we find a lot of moonstone that just has sunstone in it. It's quite a rare occurrence. We named it Eclipsite, the sun and moon eclipse. Um, so have a look in there. Oh, oh, that is so cool. What makes Eclipsite Eclipsite? Well, it's that combination. Most sunstones, it's usually plagioclase or oligoclase. It's not orthoclase albite mix. So yeah, it's, it's quite a rare combination just to find sunstone and moonstone together. Moonstone with little platelets. A lot of them are hexagonal, very thin, and it's hematite. Once again, you do get that oxidization, so you do get other colors coming in, your blues and pinks. Quite often people buy this material online and it's being sold as rainbow lattice, but it's not. It doesn't have the crosshatch the pattern. Yeah, it doesn't have the blades. <laughs> well, but that's good to know. So if you guys ever see something marketed as rainbow lattice that doesn't actually have that crosshatch kind of pattern. It's not. It's not. So a lot of people who watch our channel like to go rock hounding. Do you have any advice for people like that? Well, just spend the time. And if you pick something up that you are not sure of, you might as well take it home and then throw it out at home rather than find out later that it was worth something. I did do a lot of walking when I was younger. I would park in a spot and then I would just 
walk off and in the distance. I was always looking at gullies and weathered out crops and anything that was different, even including the vegetation. When you get a slight change in vegetation, sometimes the mineralisation in the ground has changed. I'd walk around and then um, probably spend the rest of my day trying to find where I'd park my car. <laughs> Here's a few cabochons that I've brought along. This one is pretty much just lattice with the moonstone. Most of the good gems that we get are not very big. So here's a couple, just to give you an idea of what our premium yeah. material looks like. Wow, it's just so incredibly unique. Yep, and if you tilt the small ones in the right direction, you'll see it has every color of the rainbow. That is so cool. Okay, so on this channel, we usually show a lot of specimens, but we have to pick our favorite to take a closer look at, which is sometimes very difficult to do. Which one is it? <laughs> you okay, show me. I, I actually, it's this one. I think the, the color on that, I love it. It kicks. It kicks. Do you have a favorite on the table? Oh, your own. So that has those thick the flashes. Thick, the thick bands are bands. what a lot of people are looking for. It really catches the eye. Yeah. So take a closer look. I love learning about new gemstones, seeing new gemstones. I think if you've spent any time in this industry, you know that you have never seen it all. There's no. always something new and interesting to discover. But if you guys wanna learn about other gemstones you may not be aware of, head to gemstones.com to learn all about vast variety of gems and minerals. Thank you so much for coming on the show. We really appreciate you showing us this beautiful process that you have invested so much of your time and energy in. Thank you for having me. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you don't miss out on any of our future videos, and thanks for watching.